Hello and good morning. Today we're doing a behind the scenes look at using the Artec Leo for digital archiving and historical preservation. We're at the era W. Prescott Historical Library, founded in 1909. We're using Artec Leo on a busy back road with no Wi Fi, no outlets, and this is the perfect solution. In front of this library, we have two beautiful traditional statues. You'll notice that there is a beautiful white matte surface finish with lots of detail on here. The overall sculpture looks amazing. There's very little damage, perhaps a little bit of concrete built up on the bottom here, but this one looks great. The one on the right, which is symmetrical, I don't know, it's missing a couple things. The top roof of the mouth isn't looking so good, that's missing. We have part of the thigh that is missing, a couple good cracks in the back. However, the base does look much better than the one on the left. So what I'll do is most likely scan both of these, but borrow portions. Maybe borrow the top half from here and borrow the bottom half right here to create two perfect symmetrical statues. Here's why the Arctic Leo is perfect for the job here. You'll notice I'm an industrial road. There is no wires. I don't have any outlets. All I have is a gutted historical library behind me. This one-handed operation, this Arctic Leo is a fantastic scanner. It's got a 14.4 volt, 6.8 amp hour battery. And the best thing about this is a 5.5 inch touchscreen. I can press new project. It's very easy to use. Let's see that it's opening up a new project. I'm gonna go over to our statue on the right hand. And you can see there's a little distance indicator. As I get closer, it turns red. As I get farther away, it turns blue, which is what we don't want. We want to be in that nice green zone. All I have to do is press, start my scan. And you'll notice I am now collecting data. This can go up to 80 frames per second. Right now I'm going somewhere in between 20 and 40. The best thing about this is that if I need to take a break, I can go ahead and I can stop this. I can review my scan. You can see it right here. Then I can go back, find a previous area I've scanned, press resume. It'll find the area that I previously scanned. It recognizes it. I'll resume my scan and I'll keep on going and scanning the rest of this. Okay, so our first scan is done. I'm gonna kind of open up the project. This is the raw data for the right-hand side, which is the more intact version, and that looks amazing. Again, this is raw data, so it still needs to be post-processed, stitched, watertight, and refined, but even at this level, it is amazing. Let's go and check out the texture overlay. It's got all the nice white marble colors, those rich black streaks of marble in the back. The base has a little bit of concrete and cement on it. I mean, this looks great. We'll take it back to the PC, we'll transfer it over Wi-Fi or SD card, and we'll check it out there. We're back at the Nashua office where I've uploaded the scans via SD card. The first scan shows the well-preserved base and the damaged top half. We want to retain and keep the bottom half, so we're going to enable the eraser cut plane function, which automatically detects planar surfaces and creates a cut between the base and the top half, leaving us the desired bottom. Then we'll move on to the left side statue, which has a much better top half, but also a damaged base. We'll create another eraser cut plane as we did with the other statue, but we'll delete the bottom half instead. Next, we'll use the lasso eraser to remove any residual artifacts from the base statue, leaving us with a clean rectangular opening. From here, we can move to the tools menu and begin processing a solid model. Generally, the first step is to perform global registration, followed by outlet or removal to remove any small unconnected surfaces. Considering the model is quite large, we're going to use the lower resolution fast fusion, which is still very detailed. And lastly, we'll use the fix holes function to make a watertight solid model. We're going to repeat the exact same steps on the top half of the statue by cleaning up the base, processing the scan, and fixing holes. We now have two separate solid models, the bottom base and the top half of the statue. Using the texture function, we'll remap the texture frame to the surface of the model and enable in-painting for any blank spots. Lastly, we just need to use the transform command to stack these on top of each other and export as an OBJ with PNG textures. Because Artec Studio is specific to Artec 3D scanners and not everyone will have a license, we uploaded our completed model to an online library called Sketchfab. If we search for Chinese Lion, you'll see we're not the first to upload a similar model as these statues are found worldwide. Some might be for digital sculptures, for video games and CGI, but it also looks like there's a few scans in here. Sketchfab offers additional filters for lighting and camera angles, so we can actually see the details a little better in this viewer. Last but not least, how will we get our symmetrical statue? Easy, we'll revisit the transform command and use the mirror function to flip the model across the x-axis. Simple as that. We also have a watertight model, which means we can 3D print much smaller replicas as educational samples or souvenirs. If you have any questions, would like to purchase the scanner or need something scanned, reach out to us at info at solidexperts.com.